I went to school with LaGuardia and he was the first person I met. We had an English class together. I was really quiet. So I was curious to know who she was and I would, I would joke with her all the time. I would be sarcastic. He would just talk to me. He wanted to know about me and I really found that to be very special. He was charming. He was funny and he would MC. He would have these ciphers in high school. I got to know about her culture, her family from Trinidad listen to Indian music I had never heard and I started sharing underground hip-hop with her. When she went away to college, I went to a local college, community college, because my grades... But anyway, we just seemed to get, get closer. This is a guy who I felt so close to that we would talk about um, people we liked. He would tell me about his relationships. It was crazy because it even got to the point where we were ending our conversations with I love you in like a friendly way. I came down for winter break and it was a small group of us going to this um, Christmas amusement park. And so I'm getting dressed but then I'm like I'm really conscious about what I'm wearing and I'm trying to look cute and I'm like wait what am I doing? Why am I what is going on and I'm trying on these different outfits and I'm getting all nervous and I'm like why am I nervous and then I just it just like dawned on me like oh my gosh this is for LaGuardia and I'm like LaGuardia? I wasn't really expecting more than a friendship to happen but in the back of my mind I was always open to the possibility. He knocks on the door and you know I see him and I'm hoping he thinks I'm cute and I'm like, this is ridiculous. I can't, no, this is my best friend. There's no way. I was dating somebody else and it was just the little bit of time I spent with her as a friend, I just felt like, man, this is a, uh, this is, this is kind of what I want. Like, this is the kind of person I, I want to be with. We were talking on the phone as we normally do and it was something that he had asked me that led to me having to admit that I liked him. I was so nervous and I actually hung up on him. <laughs> I told him I had to call him back and I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, what do I do? I'm so nervous about telling him, but I'm like, you know what? Okay, so I call him back and I just, I took a deep breath and I told him how I felt and you know, lo and behold, he felt the same way too. After that, I broke up with the girl I was dating. We kind of talked a little more and then we started our own relationship. The beginning of our relationship was, it was amazing. We would send like these poetic emails to each other and tell each other how we're doing and what we think about each other. And I remember um, buying these phone cards, you know, so you can call long distance. Every opportunity we had to see each other, we would see each other. Everything moved fast and in a way that I wouldn't have expected because this girl, you know, we were friends, but there was none of that. Oh, I don't want to mess up the friendship. We just, it just became a relationship and it felt right. And it was nice and it was free and it was fun. Being in complete love with each other, just being in sync. That was probably the best times of our relationship and they happened pretty frequently. I was so comfortable with LaGuardia, like dating him just came natural. Being in love with him came natural. All at once I wanted to know everything about her. I'm like, let's just share all of our secrets, put everything out on the table, let's not hold anything back. I wanna know everything about you. Even though I had been in complete bliss with LaGuardia, I still found it hard to let him know my secret. My first memory of depression was probably when I was 11. The memory I have is that I lined up all my mom's pills in the bathroom and I decided I was gonna take each and every one of them. And I just felt that I was better off not being in this world. I, I was a failure. I didn't know that I had a problem with depression. I just knew I had a problem with being sad. I would get okay and I would be able to function and I, I would be all right, but I never was completely happy. And I remember it being distinctly intense when I found out that both of my parents were uh, struggling with addiction. When I realized the intensity of what they were going through, I just felt so alone. And I just felt so uncomfortable just sharing what I was feeling. 
from then on, I would just have bouts of sadness. I was always critical. I felt like I was so incredibly overweight. There was nothing I could do to make myself look pretty. I felt so ugly. I felt so less than, and that everything about me was, was just a failure. When she revealed all of this to me, I assured her that, look, it doesn't matter. I'm here for you. I love you. And it just made me go harder. Depression, in my mind, was when you feel sad. So, you know, you feel sad and then you don't feel sad. So I was like, this is just a temporary thing she has to get through. You know, maybe it's just some memories she'll have to kind of go over her face and then, you know, snap it or I'll be gone. Clinical depression for me meant two to three weeks out of every month, I feel like the world is ending. And then, you know, I make a loop and I come back to a pretty okay space. I'm never completely joyous and, you know, bubbling with excitement. I'm just, I'm functioning. I was trying to be as optimistic as possible, but whenever I would hear her get into that, that state of doubt, self-doubt, questioning, I would always try to come up with something to fix it, to try to encourage her, to remind her about some scripture or pray for her or something. Cause you know, once again, I thought that depression was something that was just a temporary feeling that would fade if you like bombarded it with positive thinking and positive messages. I just couldn't control these wishy-washy feelings of despair and sadness and confusion. I just, I was just a mess for our whole relationship. And it impacted it in a way to where we would break up, we would make up. There would be so many moments where he would have to convince me that no, you're loving me good and your love is good enough. I always questioned how much I loved him. I always compared our love. I said everything positive I could think of. I did everything. I mean, I was over there. I told her I loved her. I hugged her. I just, I did all these things and it's, and it's still there. And we, we prayed about it and all this went through scripture and, and it's still there. And I didn't really understand. LaGuardia was so supportive, but at the expense of his own emotional well-being. He was trying to be my savior. He was trying to be my brother, my best friend, my counselor. And you know, he really didn't want us to talk about it too much to other people because he thought he could solve it. And so when we held it in, even when I would try to kind of convince him like, no, we should really talk about this to somebody because I don't want to burden you anymore. It was, I still got some resistance. And so when I would lay out all my stuff that I was going through, um, it took a toll on, on both of us for the negative. I kind of would suppress the way I felt and just assume like, well, if this is happening or if she's feeling a certain way, it has to be depression and let me, since I don't know what it's like to deal with that, let me just put that aside and be there for her. I would just yell at myself and, you know, why are you like this? Why are you, why do you have all these problems and why can't you get it together? I had so much hatred for myself that it was really hard to love myself and thus it was really hard to love LaGuardia.